So listen to this. Imagine being 14 years old and already having a million followers on Instagram. You know what? That's nothing. Imagine being 14 years old and already being a self-made millionaire, being on commercials with Neymar and Ronaldinho, signing deals with Nike. Yeah. That's what happened to Xavi Simons. I mean, how could that kid not go viral? He had skills like Messi and hair like Valderrama. That's like the perfect combo. However, there was a little problem. When you're that successful, that young, people tend to get a little jealous. And so, very quickly, the world began demanding to know whether he was gonna be the next Messi or the next Freddy Adu. And trust me, everyone wanted him to fail. So, the moment Xavi slipped up just a little bit, the fans were relentless. They labeled him a flop, a spoiled brat, an Instagram footballer. And as the years passed, the world forgot about Xavi Siemens. But today, I'm here to show you that not only was everyone wrong, but Xavi Siemens has just proved that he is one of the biggest young talents in the world, that he is destined for greatness. After all, how could he not be? His father, Rogelio Siemens, was a serious baller. Not only did he play all over the Netherlands and in Japan, but he once went head to head with Ruud van Nistelrooy back when he was at PSV and he completely demolished them, scoring four goals in just that one match. So, yeah, the talent was already there, but if Virgilio might not have been properly nurtured, Xavi was a little different. You see, the name is no coincidence. His father really did name him after the great Xavi Hernandez. That's how obsessed he was. In fact, the whole family is. His older brother is literally named Faustino after Faustino Aspilha, and I kid you not, even has a cousin named Saviola Mourinho Simons. And he's even playing for AZ Alkmaar's academy and has already been called up for the national team as well. So, yeah, obviously, this is a real life project Mbappe. This family was determined to make sure these kids made it in football at all costs. And well, if you're wondering how far they were willing to go to make sure that happened, the answer is 1,614 kilometers, the distance from Amsterdam to Alicante. Because of course, being a Barcelona fanatic, his father decided that he had to get his son into La Masia as soon as possible. So they literally moved to Spain, signed Xavi up at Club Deportivo Taver in hopes that the closer they were to Barcelona, the more likely they would be to scout him. And well, he wasn't wrong. Just two years later, at the age of seven, ex-Barcelona player and former European champion Guillermo Amor spotted him in, in what seemed like the blink of an eye, Xavi Simons had made it into the greatest football academy in the world. And look, he did not waste any time. With the help of his father, he progressed at a rate so shocking that at the age of 10, Barcelona already saw him as their most promising young talent since Lionel Messi, bumping him up several academy levels and even handing him the captain's armband. It got so crazy that that year, Chelsea were already chasing him around trying to sign him and next year, Real Madrid and Arsenal had joined him. However, if things were crazy then, it all became 10 times worse when three years later he began posting clips of himself playing on Instagram, going viral over and over again. And from there on out, well, he signed with Nike, joining a roster of players that included the likes of Ronaldo and Neymar, then he began playing for the Dutch under-15 national team and, above all, as his father would say, agents began showing up all over the place, offering money like he couldn't even imagine. And two years later, having already hit 1 million followers on Instagram, one agent finally got to him. His name was Mino Raiola. Look, I don't want to go too hard on the man because, after all, he did pass away last year. But there's a reason as to why Raiola quickly became the most infamous and controversial agent in the world. He was money hungry, he never seemed to care about preserving his clients' relations with the fans or the club, and one thing above all, he just always seemed to push young players to go too fast, and more than often, it almost ruined their careers. So when Xavi signed with him, he knew there was reason to be worried. And well, before he knew it, Raiola was convincing the entire family that Barcelona didn't value them, that Xavi should have been playing for their B-team already, that they actually didn't care about the academy anymore, that ever since Xavi and Iniesta, no player had made it to the main team, that everyone from Adama Traoré to Dani Olmo and Icardi had to flee the country in order to find a smidget of success. And suddenly, if before the Simons family saw La Masia as the promised land, now they weren't so sure anymore. Once Raiola presented him with 1 million reasons a year to join PSG, well, unsurprisingly, they followed the money, just like every single one of his other clients. 
Little did they know that, in reality, Xavi's generation would lead to the resurgence of La Masia with several players from Gavi to Pedri and Ansu Fati not just making it to the first team but becoming some of the most important players at the club with the first two even winning the Golden Boy Award. While in Paris, things were just as bad if not worse than they expected them to be at Barcelona, with the club's obsession for big blockbuster signings repeatedly stunting the growth of their academy products and forcing them to move away as well. Just look at Nkunku or Kingsley Coman. To be fair, there was one thing I've always found awesome about this move and that was how Xavi claimed it was tough to let go of the dream of playing alongside Lionel Messi because, well, little did he know, huh? <laughs> But yeah, moving on, just two years after arriving at PSG, having pulled off 17 goals and 29 assists in 66 matches at the youth level, Xavi would already be getting his professional debut, and with Pochettino being known for taking good care of the academy players, there was a lot of hope for Xavi. But then, while playing for the Dutch under-19s, he was sent back home alongside four other players after being accused of sneaking girls back into the hotel midway through the pandemic. And though he would repeatedly claim that he had only got into the room because he had heard loud music and that he had never had any intention of staying there for long, well, let's just say that between that and PSG's disappointing season which saw them lose out on the league to Lille, no one seemed to care much when Xavi was sent back to play with the under-19s. In fact, I'd say a lot of his haters were quite pleased to watch their claims that he was just a loose cannon slash wannabe influencer being proven true. And to make things worse, just as Xavi was destroying the UEFA Youth League with 4 goals and 6 assists in 7 matches, he made sure to go completely overboard in his celebration of his goal versus Sevilla, starting a brawl and being handed the one match suspension that culminated in PSG's elimination from the competition. Once again, proving everyone kind of right, and even as he made sort of a comeback to the main team, not only did he settle for one single assist and zero goals across his nine appearances, but he once again managed to direct the spotlights towards them in the worst possible time, asking to take the decisive penalty in a League Cup shootout and completely choking it, sending PSG out of the competition in the round of 16. And then, having to swallow his pride as the coach placed the blame on him, claiming that he had never instructed Xavi to take any penalties. Yeah, rough. In fact, it got so rough that shortly after that, Nike even ended their relationship with him. But look, this was absurd. Even though it seemed like Xavi had been there forever, he was still only 19 and as someone once said, for every Wayne Rooney destroying the league at 16, there are 10 Iniestas waiting to bloom only well into their 20s. In fact, you only had to look back 2 years to watch Nkunku go through the exact same situation, missing a penalty against Rennes, only to then quickly become one of the most informed players in Europe. Come on, the kid had only played 300 minutes all year. But as I've been saying, it wasn't about being logical. People legitimately wanted to see him fail. However, it was at about this moment that Xavi finally got an opportunity to turn the game on its head. You see, while trying not to sound insensitive, a few months before the end of the season, Mino Raiola suddenly passed away, and with his negative influence now off the picture and Xavi's contract with PSG about to run out, he had a decision to make. To renew or not to renew. After all, there were rumors that before his death, Raiola was negotiating a comeback to Barcelona and even when he was right about to run out of a contract, the news came out that Real Madrid had approached him. Clearly the name Xavi Siemens was still relevant enough to attract some top clubs, maybe it was time he tried his luck somewhere else. But you know what he did? Well, first of all, he looked past all those top-tier clubs and instead focused on a possible move to PSV. And even when PSG tried to get him to renew, proposing that he join PSV on loan instead, he refused and instead signed for them as a free agent with one special clause in his contract. If PSG ever wanted to take him back, all they would have to pay for his transfer was 6 million euros. You know what this meant? It meant that this was redemption season for Xavi Siemens, if at PSG would probably sooner or later end up being sent off to join the famous undesirables, this way it was time for him to go somewhere quiet and make some noise to show the world what he could do when he was actually given a proper shot. And well, with his father's old nemesis Van Nisselhoy becoming his new mentor at PSV, just 17 minutes into his debut in the Dutch Super Cup playing against rivals Ajax, Xavi scored his first goal. On his second ever match, he got an assist, then three matches and three consecutive braces later he was already 
your nine goal contributions in his first five matches at the club, instantly being handed the award for the league's player of the month. For those watching, it quickly became obvious that we have been sold lies by the media. This was no spoiled teenage celebrity. This kid looked as focused and determined as anyone could possibly look. As PSV's second coach would say, he's really hungry. He reminds me of Zlatan and Ronaldo. He's not afraid to say he'll become the best. In his head, it's a matter of time until he proves everyone wrong. And as Vani Salhoi would simply put, his mindset is unprecedented. And you know what, there was never any need to go this far to get confirmation that the kid really is all about football. All the way back in Alicante, if you ask people about him, the first thing they tell you is that they still see him all the time, that little Xavi still spends his summers there, that he visits his old academy every day, asks for some footballs, heads to the pitch and spends his days practicing alone. Certainly, this isn't the crazed partying playboy we were sold. And with his performances in the Air Divisie repeatedly convincing everyone watching that he was the next great thing, there was only one thing left to do. To announce himself to the world and once the chance to play against Arsenal in the Europa League came up, he did not waste one moment. Just 8 minutes into the match, he was already forcing Ramsdale to stretch himself all the way to the top corner. Midway through the match, he scored an incredible goal, making his way through a maze of Arsenal defenders and hitting a seriously cold celebration, only to then be denied by the VAR. By the end of it, even with young talents like Martinelli and Gapu pacing around, Xavi was undoubtedly the best player on the pitch. And let me tell you, that match was only the cherry on top. Because with Van Gaal watching from afar, even though Xavi was yet to even make his friendly debut for the Netherlands, when the time to name the 23 players that would join him for the World Cup in Qatar arrived, there was no doubt in his mind, Xavi Simons had to come. And though he barely played, only getting like 7 minutes, something there changed him. I don't know if it was the sense of reward, if it was the feeling of stepping onto the biggest stage in the world, or if it was just watching Messi lift up the cup, but something must have inspired him. Because once he was back in the Eredivisie, he made his performances from earlier in the season look average. Putting up 10 goals and 5 assists in 15 league matches, even scoring the late winner that would secure PSV's Champions League spot, if some worry that the departure of Gakpo following the World Cup could have hurt his form, they were surely surprised to see that instead, sharing the spotlight with him was only holding him back, that Xavi was undoubtedly a star player. By the time the season ended, Xavi had been in the league's team of the month in 5 out of the possible 9 months. Even more impressive considering he had been played all over the pitch from the left wing to the right, from midfield to even a few matches as a striker. Being effective in every single position and prolific enough to beat everyone to the title of the Eredivisie's top scorer. It doesn't get much more impressive than that. I mean... I guess it does, because then he also assisted the decisive goal in the final of the Dutch Cup versus Ajax, eventually being nominated for the European Golden Boy Award. And though obviously players like Musiala and Bellingham are the heavy favorites, aside from Musiala who's just in another world, in my opinion no one really managed to outshine Xavi Simons. And so, there was only one final question to be answered. Where should he have gone next? Staying at PSV would be the obvious answer, you know, get another solid season under his belt, enjoy the stability, grow as a player and all of that. On the other hand though, you had Tottenham, Man United and even title contenders Arsenal seemingly willing to pay up to 50 million for his signing. And that could have been a good choice, playing under Tenag or Arteta seemed like a good fit, but well, just because you're the Eredivisie's top scorer doesn't mean you're ready for the Premier League, just look at Vicent Janssen, yeah. But instead of going with any of those options, he instead allowed PSG to trigger his buyout clause, joining his ex-club for 6 million euros under one condition. That first, he had to be loaned out to Leipzig and considering once again how things went with Nkunku, I'd say Xavi's future is looking more promising than ever.